Hello friends, and welcome back to the Mask Fan Attic. It's always nice to find you up here um, amongst the rest of the oddities and curiosities we keep here in the attic above Horror Hotel. Um, spooky all the time, because that's how we do. Uh, thank you for joining me once again. Tonight, we have a mask based on a movie that came out way back in 1958, but uh, this particular mask did not come along until 1989. That's a long time after 1958, you see. Uh, what movie am I talking about? Well, it's a title that uh, is basically a phrase which I'm sure many of my fellow horror enthusiasts have heard their wives using uh, with um, alarming regularity. Namely, I married a monster from outer space. That's the title of the film, I Married a Monster from Outer Space. Now the mask in question doesn't really have a name other than Monster from Outer Space because in the movie they never really told us what planet these guys came from. So you can't really say he's a Martian or a Neptunian or a Rexacoricophalopatorian. You can't really know what planet they came from. So you pretty much have to just refer to him as alien or as monster. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I know, I know you deserve a better name than that, but talking about people who deserve better names than they got, let me... Oh, <clears throat> the audience is still here. <clears throat> we'll take the conversation up later. Anyway, uh, several uh, mask artists and mask uh, companies, including Distortions Unlimited, had threatened to come out with an edition based on this creature uh, several times over the years, but it never happened for years and years. I think largely because nobody could settle on a good way to do this business of these tentacles because as you can see these aren't molded flat into the mask they actually sort of stand out into the air here and more more uh, importantly and more impressively I think they also have an actual separation there these things have to go out away from the head and then reattach at the shoulder as you see here because if, if it wasn't I would not be able to do this, you see? Would I be able to do that if that were filled in? No, of course not. Uh, now I think the way some people were planning to do it was uh, simply make this sort of an indented area and paint it black in there, but it wouldn't go all the way through. Uh, the problem with doing it this way is that it's really tough to get these out of a mold. This and this, all these little tunnels going, uh, going on, make it sort of hard to uh, fill the mold correctly and and obviously you can't put, just rip it out of the mold because you've got this connecting point on either side so what had to be done is the mold had to be uh, outfitted with a specially made or that is the sculpture I'm sorry not the mold the sculpture in order to make the mold the sculpture had to be outfitted with a specially designed wall or dam around it and it's called a dam because if you've ever built one that's the word you will utter the most frequency, uh, the most frequently during the time you are attempting to build it. Uh, it had to have a dam that included these two little sort of oval shaped areas here and then uh, the, the mold would lock together front and back with these areas of the front and back of the mold actually coming together and touching you see. So you couldn't pull a latex mask out of a mold like that. You have to separate the mold every time and carefully work the mask loose. Likewise these, when latex is fresh, it would probably be easy to stretch these or rip them or damage them when you're taking it out of mold. So these always had to be uh, uh, cast up with a certain amount of, of care more than the average mask would require. Now if you're looking at those funny eyes, the reason this one has what looks like little pieces of screen in his eyes is because he has little pieces of screen in his eyes and the reason for that is that's what it looks like in the movie uh, if you if you look at the really good stills of these masks from the film they had screen there and then they had this uh, this weird hooked pupil going on one of the more imaginative creatures, I think, of the 50s. Really strange and interesting design and not like any other space uh, monster of the period. Now, where did this mask finally come from in 1989, you ask? I'm glad you asked that question. It was sculpted, sculpted, mind you, by none other than Laura Lady. Laura sculpted this one uh, from scratch 
from uh, you know just studying uh, stills, photos, and, and uh, freeze framing the movie and such to look at all the uh, the contours and the details of it. And then, uh, well, we weren't sure that this would really work like we thought it would. So believe it or not, uh, Laura threw together a really small little kind of rough version. No details, completely inaccurate, just the basic shapes of a little tiny. And we tried making a little tiny mold on it to see if we could get this stuff out of here intact. And we did, and we thought, well, okay, let's go ahead and go for it and do the king size version and I love this mask I think it's very very accurate it looks just like it came from the movie to me and I'm not just saying that because my wife sculpted it because I don't I don't know if she'll ever watch this video so I don't need to just you know uh, uh, butter her up or anything but uh, I think she did a wonderful job I think this looks just like it these the weird lines and the unevenness of it and the lopsided parts of it that's just how it looks in the movie and there are probably about 30 of these in existence. Uh, we made some for friends over the years. And, uh, well, an another interesting side note about this monster is that these tubular uh, things, which in 1989 were totally tubular, these totally tubular things, uh, supposedly were originally incorporated into the design of the costumes in order to give trained dogs something to bite when they would attack actors in alien costumes so when the when the dog attacks the guy uh, he has something that he can rip loose and it looks like that might kill the alien and don't worry I'm not gonna let anything like that happen to you no of course not now uh, most of these were painted by me uh, like this one and I don't know what color they were supposed to be in the context of the story but I went with sort of a uh, yellowy greeny color because I think that looks like drive-in movie of the 50s kind of uh, you know old-school retro space uh, monster don't you think so they could have been a different color nobody seems to know for sure I kind of like the yellow greeny effect and yes in the movie they do indeed appear to be holding uh, a, a billiard ball in their oral cavities right there that's that's part of the design you see and I, I used a uh, stencil to uh, paint a white circle on there and try to make it as neat as possible and then he has a, a, a coat of uh, oversprayed uh, kind of a low gloss finish not a really really super wet high gloss finish but sort of a satiny finish to make him look just a little bit oily like his skin is a little bit slimy and weird much like mine uh, but anyway, sculpted by Laura Lady in 1989, and why did she pick this one, you may ask, or you may not. Uh, it was just a favorite monster of hers when she was a kid, and she would watch old movies on late night TV. She liked this one because it was kind of romantic in a weird way, and, um, you know, again, it seemed like nobody else was ever going to do a mask of this creature, and we figured the mask world needed one, so Laura sculpted her very own. And that's about all I have to say about the I Married a Monster from Outer Space monster. Uh, next time, we will try to find something exciting once again for you. But no, I know it probably won't be something as handsome as you. 